Here it is, the step-by-step -step guide for the semi-automated workshop Mark III. Enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, Gallic Warriors, Byzantine Knights, and Viking Raiders, welcome back to another Timo Redbeard video. I, of course, am Timo Redbeard, and I am sorry that it has taken this long to get this video out to you. I was taken, unfortunately, very ill by some form of stomach bug or food poisoning, which knocked me out for over a week. And since I did come back from being ill, I have been working really hard to get everything back in order that I missed with my company, with the stream, and now with YouTube. So again, please do accept my humblest apologies for how long this has taken. I am back now. I'm back in the swing of things. Everything has been caught up, so you can start expecting more co common and frequent YouTube content from me. But otherwise, I'm not going to waste any more of your time. Let's get straight into this step-by-step semi-automated workshop video. Enjoy. So the first thing that we were going to want to do is flatten out a large area, roughly 60 meters by 60 meters in shape. And then I, for ease of use, have just thrown down a ship where I want the dock to be. I'm not going to go through building the dock as this is self-explanatory and has been shown in other videos. Then we're going to want to lay down our ground floor foundations. And these foundations create a shape that looks exactly like this. And these are the dimensions. Then we build up the wall for our ground floor. And it's important to note that I use overlaying stone because it provides more found, uh, support for the higher levels. However, you can counteract this if you just want to use the larger stone pieces, the six by twos. Um, but you just need to run iron beams up the insides of them to get enough structural support for the top and the roof. For the staircase, we want to make sure that a cart can get the whole way up easily. So we're going for a double wide staircase here and we're just building it up using stones underneath for the foundational support for the stairs and making it look as clean as possible as shown. And to make sure that we're not just pointlessly wasting resources and space, we are creating a little alcove here using the arches to make the staircase um, supported, going all the way up to the next floor, but giving us space underneath the staircase to place more chests or other various pieces. Now we're going to place down the bottom parts of our chutes and the easiest way to get these lined up is to find the doorway that leads out onto the side entrance which is where the wheat is going to come down and line up the side that is going to be closest to the front door with the inside of the door as you can see in this video and then you just want to build the chutes like you you see here with the gates and then the last one goes in the middle of the building further along opposite from the front door as you see. Now we're going to place in the second floor and to do that we are going to need to use the tops of the chutes to uh, be foundation and pillar support and then we're also going to add in arches and pillars where needed to support the stone floor but otherwise just fill in the area make sure you're leaving a bit of headspace for the staircase and make sure that you're not blocking up the chutes dropping down into below the next step is to terraform and of course when i first made this guide and video we were using the old terraforming system and now we're on the new terraforming system so this might require a lot of stone and there are definitely other ways to get around it uh, you can just use a whole lot more iron beam reinforcement as frankly I do believe that farming iron is way easier than farming stone for the new terraforming system uh, so that might be the way that you want to go however and then we're just going to extend the floor out over the platform 10 meters or five walls deep and this is going to be for our kiln area or for our storage slash living space slash comfort area depending on what you want to use it for uh Nice and easy.
we're going to place our spinning wheels here now because it's the easiest time to do so because this is going to get covered up soon uh, with just a small access point for you to put the flax in because this is where the staircase is going to go to get up to the smelters. Then proceed to chuck a couple of walls down either side of the spinning wheels and lay six floors over like you see here. And this is going to be the enclosure for the spinning wheels and the start of the staircase. Then proceed to build a U-bend staircase that's wide enough for the cart to go the whole way round and up it, leading up to the platform that we just created above the spinning wheels. Now it's time to build our kiln shoot system, and this system is identical to the one used in the Workshop Mark II video, so the full in-depth guide to build it is there. I'm just going over it really quickly here. And now that we know where the stairs are, we can place this nice and comfortably so that everything sits nice and close together. So for easy access, but also doesn't make everything too cramped. Now we're going to build the Jenga towers from the stone roofing guide video uh, to support our kilns so that we can use uh, wood roofing and wood walling, uh, but still have the support needed to get those kilns up nice and high to drop the coal down the chute. Then we extend the pillar using arches and place stone floors on them and then repeat it on the other side of the chute as well. Then we're going to place our kilns on the stone floors like so and we'll be able to get four kilns up here which will provide us plenty of coal. And then the rest of the floor we can fill in with wood at a later time. And your end product for the kiln shoot should look a lot like this. Uh, uh, you can use stone for walls or wood for walls is entirely up to you. You can use stone for the whole flooring section as well. It is entirely up to you. Uh, this is way I've done it this time to show that you can do it with minimal stone usage. Now we're going to set up the shoots for both of the smelter shoots. And to do that, we're going to want to use two separate sets of roof that are two and a half roofs long. And the way that we're going to get that half roof is that we're going to place two roofs and then we're going to build walls out from the staircase that we've already worked on and then snap the roof to that uh, to those walls, which is going to give us that extra bit of half roof on both sides. Now we're going to place iron gates at the end of each of the chutes, going too high from the stone floor level, uh, like you see here. Uh, this just provides an extra little bit of structural support to the chutes and also looks good. And let's be honest, looks mean quite a lot. And now with all of the shoot sort of inner workings at this level done, we're going to enclose it in with some stone walling. Again, you can use six by two stones if you want to make it easier for yourself, but you will have to line the insides of them with stone, uh, with iron poles if you want it to be strong enough. And once both sides of both shoots are built up with walls all the way up to where the gate is at the top, then it's time to build the central staircase leading up to the smithies. And again, we want to make most efficient use of our space and our resources. So instead of just filling in this area with a big staircase, we're using arches to support the floors, which will then support the stairs, which also then gives us an alcove that we can use for storage or other things later down the line. Now I opted to actually go one higher than I had originally planned with the walls here because uh, at the end of the day, when you're working with smelters and you're trying to automate the delivery systems like shoots like this, the more gravity you have on your side, the better. So having that extra little drop down from the smelters before it hits the diagonal shoots uh, is just gonna make everything run smoother and you'll have less hitches. And now we're just going to want to add some extra structural strength to this section. So we're just going to run some iron poles up the outside walls of the chutes. 
and this is going to just mean that everything sits a bit nicer and isn't as riskily placed. And then run some poles up the inside walls as well. Obviously, you don't need to run the poles up as high, just up to where the floor is holding the stairs in place. Now to build the floor up by the smelters, we're going to need to build up our exterior walls. So this is obviously the front wall where the front door is. And you're going to want to build this up with iron pole reinforcement to the heights shown on the video now. Then, like before, you want to use arches along the edge of the wall to anchor the floor in and support it and then connect the floor between the wall and the staircase and chutes that we have made previously. When placing smelters on top of the chutes, you want to leave a one meter gap and then place a stone floor and then place the smelter on top and then do the same. Leave a one meter gap, place a stone floor, put the smelter on top leave a one meter gap, place a smelter on top. And you do that on both sides. With the blast furnaces, if you want to uh, get the ore, the ingots to actually fall out of the furnace chute and down into the main chute, then you're gonna need to place a 26 degree beam inside the spout of the blast furnace like you're seeing here. And then the ingots will pop straight out and down the hole. Place the smelters on the other side in the same way, one meter gap, stone floor one meter gap stone floor one meter gap and then you are finished with placing the smelters down and they are ready to go now build the windmill side wall that's the side with the little spout sticking out the top of it up to the same height as you did the front wall and the kiln area this is going to allow us to place more floors in and be supported build the walkway pretty much any way you see fit I've uh, connected it to the stone floor on the same level as the smelters and then run a wooden and core wood sort of walkway the whole way along the kilns, uh, which doesn't interfere with the chute at all. Looks really, really nice and allows easy access to the kilns. Now we're just going to build a little roofed walkway over to the little bit sticking out of the windmill side of the build. And this only needs to be four walls high, covered in stone floors. And then, of course, leave a nice square area for the chutes so that the barley flour can drop down out the windmills and down into the chute. And then of course we build the chute and due to the way the windmills uh, are gonna be placed later, we only need to do this two roofs uh, wide. We don't need to go the two and a half that we did with the smelters. So just simply place uh, a couple of 45 degree slanted roofs and then you are pretty much ready to go. You just need to enclose it in. And then we're going to want to build our overhang away from the main building towards the wooden chute that we've just built for the barley. So to do that, we're going to place arches along the outside wall. And then we're going to place stone floors on top of the arches to place the windmills on top of so that they push out into the chute. And because we're connecting stone floors to wooden supports, we're going to chuck in some iron beams on the underside as well, just to make sure everything stays up and solid because the wood can't really support the stone without some assistance. And then we're just going to place our two windmills, making sure the spout is hovering over the top of the chute and not hiding sort of like over the top of the stone where it might get caught up or hitched up and that won't be good. 
And then just for looks and also as kind of a safety rail, just place some half walls, uh, wooden half walls to, uh, you know, enclose the area in. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the step-by-step -step build guide for the workshop Mark III or the semi-automated factory. Obviously, I haven't put a roof on here um, and I haven't filled out like with the chests and everything because at the end of the day, that's entirely your guys' decision. What you want to do is up to you. How you want to decorate it, how you want to make it look is entirely up to you. I'm just trying to show you the mechanical how-to and not the decorative how-to. I want you guys to be inspired and create your own awesome creations. A lot of people have asked me whether this is going to be up on BuildShare, and unfortunately, I do have to tell you that no, it's not. And the reason for that is because the author of BuildShare has used a completely different uh, system for his mod. So almost all Valheim mods are on Bepinex, and uh, his mod is on Inslim. And Inslim is... Uh, it doesn't play well with Bepinex. And because of all my work with Darkheim and the challenges in uh, Darkheim, which you can find out more about if you come across to the Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash um, I can't run both Bepinex and Inslim at the same time. So unfortunately, I don't have a build share to provide to you. But I really wish you all luck with building this. I know it's been a long time coming and I do apologize for that. Thank you so much. Uh, please do hit that like button. Consider subscribing and don't forget to caress that notification bell if you haven't already uh i do stream on twitch like i've already said monday through to friday starting at 1 p.m bst i'd love to catch you there um check out the links in the description below but otherwise ladies and gentlemen peace out take care